What's going on guys? Welcome to episode 13 of Wrecked Bike Rebuild, motorcycle YouTube build show where we take wrecked bikes, turn them into dream bikes, and then give them away. Wow! Got you that time, I'm gonna, huh? I was not ready for that. Uh, so guys, yeah, this is the episode where we are putting, we're going to finalize the clip-on situation with some levers, master cylinders, and and we're gonna bleed the brakes and in the front and reservoirs. Yeah, so we got a lot of stuff from Moto Million. I'm trying to think if I got everything in this episode. Oh, I didn't talk about Patreon. If you want to win the motorcycle we build, you can go check out Patreon. It's top link in the description. If you're already on Patreon, you get a massive high five. So today we've got master cylinders that already have the levers installed. This is our other one. What kind of master cylinders are they? Chase. They are Brembo RCS 16 and 17. Why the 16 and 17? Well, Brian, thankfully you asked me. I was on a conversation with Manny from Moto Million. We'll talk about Moto Million in a second, but Manny told me that a lot of people are confused on what master cylinders to get for what bike they have. And if you have a Panigale with the stock brakes, then you need to get a 16 for the clutch side and a 17 for the brake side because there's like 19s and it's not about getting the biggest and best one it's about matching the master cylinders to the brakes so any Panigale you get 17 and a 16. Okay um, also we have mounting hardware that we uh, got for the reservoirs, but the master cylinders and the reservoirs we got from Moto Million. If you guys don't know who Moto Million are, they're the people we, uh, don't worry about that. They're the people we hooked up with to get a lot of the parts for the motorcycle. So if you guys want to buy anything off of Moto Million, you can get a discount if you use the code CHASE. Moto Million, shout out to you. Also, Manny, shout out to you for all the uh, added information you give us in these episodes. We all appreciate it. So uh, last episode, I forgot to do the uh, the build budget breakdown thing. So for the levers, the reservoirs, the master cylinders, and the mat the slave cylinder, all of that is on the screen. Shouldn't be that bad. Master cylinders actually will be though. Master cylinders are expensive and that slave cylinder is not cheap. This is how much this bike has ruined me because after installing a $1,300 rear shock, it's like $500, <laughs> whatever. Well, we're still looking very forward to the price tag for the bodywork. Oh, the bodywork's gonna be bad. The wheels are gonna be and terrible. And the wheels. Yeah, the people in the comments are, uh, the comments are buzzing with what wheels we're gonna do. They're expensive and they're pretty. All right, uh, let's do some B-roll of all the stuff we got so that way everybody can see it and then we'll, uh, we'll install the shiz. Okay. Uh, those are the master cylinders and all the pretty bits of uh, what we're working on today. So step one is just take the old ones off and all right, just so we're wait, not, no, it's just not. so we're not floundering around for a while trying to figure this out. We're going to remount the brakes. We're going to remount the clutch slave cylinder. So we were going to remount. Then we're going to drain all the fluid out of the whatever fluid is left out of both of those. Wait, how do you? How do you drain? Oh, it's got like, just like brakes do. Has the little- It's hydraulic, thing. it's got fluid in it. You yeah. gotta have a way to get it out. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. I just hadn't taken a look at the Yeah, so we'll, we'll remount that. Okay. We'll remount the brake calipers. Right. We'll drain the systems. Right. And then we can start disassembling. 
That's a good point. I was over here about to take shit off. So we've got the hardware for the brakes. We right, have... So we're gonna mount the calipers first, right? Yeah, so, or, right, so get those clean. Or do we want, yeah. We're gonna be playing the put it together, take it apart game a bit today. enough for uh, the first scrubbing. So should I blow it off at this point or? Uh, so what we're gonna do now is we're going to crack the bleeder loose and we're going to spread the pistons. Like by hand or with a flathead? Um, well, a flathead, I mean, you may not be able to do it by hand, but a flathead may damage the brake pads. I don't know if we're getting new pads or not. Yeah, well, pads are too easy to not get a new set. If, uh, if we are getting new pads, then you can just use a flathead and we're not worried about it. Okay. There you go. You could honestly just take the whole brake line off too if you really want to, which is the bigger part. Yeah. yeah. It looks like that's what broke free anyway. Okay, and then there's a flat head. Point that hole where the brake line goes on downward and spread the pads. They work together, there you go. You gotta work them back and forth. Okay, so there. Right, so now we can take the brake pads out. Okay. That thing's still dripping brake fluid, so be mindful. So you gotta take the pin out and then take that bolt out. Came loose that quick, huh? Yeah. Is that bad? Yeah, it probably shouldn't have been that easy. But okay. it's got a it's got a safety pin in it, so it can't go anywhere, so it wouldn't have been a big deal. Now watch where that cop, that spring piece comes out, because you gotta put it back in again. That's gonna come flying out when you take that bolt out of there. Oh, it's like, okay. Okay. And the pads come out the bottom. No, they don't come out the bottom. I guess they come out the top. That'll make it easier to put the newer pads on, right? Mm -hmm. So we won't have to remove these. Now so clean now... that inside section too. Gotcha. Okay, so we want to be able to show a side-by-side -side of the pistons. Calipers. Cal Wait, what's the piston? Pistons are the things inside the engine that go up and down and make power. I thought, so these the are pistons, pistons inside the caliper. Oh, okay, so we want Caliper wanna... is made up of a set of pistons in a body. Okay, we want to show the caliper clean and, dirt, or clean and dirty comparison. So we're going to go through the process of getting this one off so that we can show you guys side-by-side. What is our first step to bleed that? To, do we I, need to mount it? I totally, totally forgot that uh, the brake line had been ripped off of it. Of that one? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so really all you have to do is take this cap off, suck out whatever's in here, mm -hmm. and then put the hose on that bleeder, crack the bleeder, and suck out anything that's left in the lines, and we can take it off. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> Okay, so now I've washed my hands and they don't feel like I dipped them in acid, because that's not good. Uh, but yeah, the difference in those, freaking nice. yeah. absolutely nice. The biggest difference, honestly, is if you touch them. 
Oh, really? Yeah, how much, uh, how much grime you actually took off of the one. Right. Compared to how nasty the other one is, like. Oh God, yeah, absolutely. If you touch this, uh, this flat the back area side of it, the yeah, back, that's yeah. the part that faces the inside of the wheel. Oh, right. Yeah. It gets covered in brake dust real bad. Yeah, like, this is like gummy. Like, I don't wanna. All right, I'm gonna put gloves on and then we'll. Uh, clean the second one. Clean the other one, do the whole process. Oh, we also found, we have a big box of we o o o OE parts, stuff. yeah. Uh, we were digging through them and we found out we did, in fact, order new brake pads. So we're gonna go ahead and install those so that we're, we're good to go. Uh, yep, yeah, don't have to do it again later. Yep, absolutely. Tinglys are still in my hands, but that's okay. You drop that Nerf gun. You put that down. <laughs> uh, okay, so now we have the calipers cleaned. Now we gotta clean the little hardwares to go with these, and then we'll grab our brand new, we'll grab our brand new brake pads. Luke will not grab the Nerf gun, and we will get the new Brake pads installed. I know what's gonna the... happen. Brian just heard that I said Luke will not grab the Nerf gun and Brian's gonna end up grabbing it. What makes you think that I, it wasn't my plan to begin with before you even noticed that he was going for it? Well, maybe I didn't, but whatever. I, I need to get like a, a, a mega clip for that holds like a hundred rounds. Dude, have you seen what Nerf, yes. like Nerf guns are out? They, I would not want to be a child. You, you come into school with like some kid with a bazooka, like nah fam. All right. Uh, everything is cleaned. All the parts are cleaned. The calipers are cleaned. So we're good to reassemble them and put them on. Then we'll do all the top stuff and then send the liquid through. You got it. Got it, okay. So I assume brake calipers are... Pads are universal, one side or the other. Okay. On these calipers. So for the brakes, or the calipers... Brembo goes on the outside, bleeders go to the top. Bleeders go to the top, okay, that was... That was the question. Now, those pads that you took out, uh -huh. do they have uh, little spacers on them at all? Anything on the back of the pad? Nope, okay. Do some of them have? Remember when we were doing uh, the WR? Had a shim and a heat shield? Yes, I do. All right, so it's that, then that, then. Not a drop of anything on any of that, huh? Well, there's no shims on the back, but you could still smear a tiny bit of grease on the back of the brake pad. Okay. And then that pin that you were about to put in could use some... Grease? Some grease so it doesn't corrode as quickly, but just very, very okay. little. So you're just talking like right there? That's it. Just where the pistons will meet it. And there you go. And now is there like just... You don't have opening? to worry about those, just the pins themselves. Just... Yep, because the brake pads move back and forth on that. So this rod should sit into that area. Did I get that backwards? I didn't put it in far enough then. Correct. Okay. Well, now I have it in a little too far. Hang on a second. Might it go the other direction? Um, there's actually an arrow on it. Oh, well, but like... It's the direction of the rotor. I see. All right, so that arrow points in the direction of the rotation of the rotor. So this goes on this way with the brake line mount facing upward. Mm -hmm. So as the wheel rotates this way, the rotor is gonna go through in that direction. Right. Because okay. you can put it on from either side as you saw. Right. And you can't get that wrong. Yeah. And then not everything's gonna line up correctly, so. Cool. All right, so I should have no problem doing this one. Okay, um, Loctite. A little bit of grease. I thought grease at first, and then I was like, well. And then again, some companies yeah. specifically ask for Loctite. But 
Ducati uses Grease B. Now I'm right to assume that like I'm just putting like that's too much, right? Just to you know keep the threads from corroding and getting stuck in there. Steel into aluminum. Steel beats aluminum. Well you really just don't want to put those dissimilar metals together without some sort of corrosion protection. Right. Metals will corrode faster if they're touching an unlike metal. Really? I just typically don't put anything together with either grease or Loctite on it. I've noticed this over time. I do want to learn what goes where. Like what, in general, what do you do? So that if I'm ever in a situation where I'm working on my own bike or something like that, because like the less stuff you have to look up, the more yeah. enjoyable the process is. At least for me, like when I'm working on my bike, it's like the looking off of stuff and I'm just like, dude, I just want to like. The nice way is to just buy a repair manual. All right, so while these are here, we may as well install the brake lines. Okay. At least, you know, because uh, we're replacing the one that snapped. Right. And then we're just re reusing the rest of the factory lines. These come with steel braided lines on them from the factory. Okay. So it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense to swap in new lines. You're not going to get anything more out of them. Right. What did we cover up right here? That's the one brake line that comes from the ABS pump. And then we need the other brake line that goes from wheel to wheel. I assume this is the wheel to wheel one because it's how small it is. Yep. Finding all the prices for the OEM stuff is going to be very fun, but hopefully I can find them and uh, and give them to you guys. These are crush washers that we'll be using. And they are. So it's probably easier to put this one on first on this side. And it only gets this guy. Yep. So there should be just the shorter mm -hmm. little guy. All right. So it's. One goes on. Nope. Yep. How do you know? The curve in it. And then the other one oh, goes on. I see. Okay. Does it angle up or towards the back of the tire? I assume the back of the tire because up would be directly at the tire, right? Does it go over? Does it fit if you go that way? So like there's this angle right here. I'm just not sure if it goes on this side or this side of it, but. How do you figure that out? Well, I'm gonna take it off and see how it fits. Yeah, see if we do it like this, the angle isn't right. It'll angle into the tire. I mean, it's pre-bent, so it has to go over the tire like that, right? It wouldn't be like that. I mean, it almost has to be down. It has to be down. There's no other way. Because there's no way that like that goes into the tire. This is your time. Like this is your your effing up. Do you know the answer to this? Of course I do. Of course you do. You could just go find a picture. Well, for one, yeah, I could. But I I think it would be valuable if I figured this out. Alright, where's a photo? How like look it up online? Is that what you're saying? Well, I don't think you're gonna go to the library and look up magazines. No, photos. I mean like did like the uh, cables didn't come with anything. Based on my internet research, this is it swooped out away from the tire, and I'm assuming it was pre-bent like it was so that it stays rigid away from the tire. Well, the the bend here. Yeah. The rest of the line is gonna be rigid because it's steel braided, oh. so it's gonna be stiff. Period. Well. Brian did what he's not supposed to do. And he touched the bike while I was doing research. I saw that the metal part right here swoops out away from the tire, which it would have to, but I didn't know how much bend I could put in that brake line. I didn't want to like mess it up. Like in my head, I'm like, if I bend it too much, it's going to crack. Obviously it didn't crack. So on this side, how do you know which one goes on top and which one goes on bottom? Swap them and see if it works. Probably will. I think this looks fine. We're gonna just, we're gonna move forward. It could be wrong. Well, you know what? If it is wrong, then that's something that we're gonna have to do. That doesn't go there. What? How does this little plastic thing not go over this thing? It doesn't go over there. I'm just gonna stop clipping things together. Is there a torque spec or? I'm sure will, there is. Will we not worry about it until time comes? Yeah, I mean, like, I'm sure we'll need to go back over this and uh, torque a bunch of stuff down, so. But right. we're still gonna have to 
We haven't torqued pretty much anything on the front end except for the triple trees. Right, so now we replace the front brake uh, reservoir and master cylinder, right? Correct. Okay. All this is absorbed out, so we should be able to loosen this guy out and just pull him out, right? Is there anything else connected to that? Uh, this little switch. So should I, how does the switch even connect to it? How is this switch on here? Is it just like pressed into there? Does our, does our new master cylinder have a switch button thing? Yeah, it came with it. Oh, okay, cool. So yeah. how- Should be one switch for each side. I don't think one side didn't come with a switch. All right, so other than the brake line coming out, it's got the switch thing in it. What's that switch for? Wait, is that the ABS pump? It's not the ABS pump. That's because that wouldn't make sense. Um, ABS pump that big? It's definitely not the ABS pump, but- No, no. How, that switch is this big. Right. What's that switch for? It, the bike brakes. What else do you need besides the brakes being applied? on a street legal motorcycle. Oh, that's the brake light? Brake light switch. Brake light switch. Obviously it's not the brake light because then it would be facing forward up here, but right, right. yes, that's a switch that turns the rear brake light on. Okay, so to unplug these, is there like a key? I don't want to rip them out. Pull! Really? Just, okay. We've had all that unplugged and off already. Oh, right, because we did all the shit up there. Right. Good point. Look at that brake line. Put the bolt in, look at the brake line. Which way is that bolt facing? So you need to put the master cylinder on there so it's at pretty much very close to that angle. Okay. But what I'm saying is move the master cylinder, Chase. Well, I needed to see at what, like, I mean, that angle works like that, right? And Thread it on, put the lever where you want it, and then tighten the banjo bolt. You're unscrewing it, not screwing it in. Righty tighty. Don't strip it. Don't strip it. You guys know I got a lot of pressure on me right now, damn it. You got two people watching you. I got, I got a million people watching me now, Brian. The pressure's really on. Okay, that's barely on. So now I can loosen. Okay, I just mentioned it 30 seconds ago and you completely ignored what I just said to move the master cylinder. Right. So the master cylinder is at the same angle as the brake line, right now you have the brake line and you're doing this with it to put the bolt in. Right. So all of this twisted pressure is against that banjo bolt as you're trying to screw it in. Okay. So loosen it, bring it this way so the bolt holes line up and you'll be able to put that bolt in without ruining anything yet, tightening it. God, how do you- I'm leaving. How do you see every single thing? I'm leaving. God. You're a mess today. Okay, so now- Did you see how nice, that pretty much moved on its own, didn't it? Yes. And it's going to follow the line, the brake line. Okay, so now it's where we'll it wants sure, to be. Make sure, try and turn that banjo bolt in by hand. Is it nice and easy? Or is it fucking stuck? Nice and easy. Okay. Now turn that thing in until it touches. You're killing me today, Chase. I see that. <laughs> now before you tighten that up again, make sure the lever clears. That's off again, right here. Right here, Chase. Staring at everything you're doing. Feel better now? No. No, I hope not. No, not at all, not even a little bit. I really like the idea of there's a Rizoma here looking at the rider and then the top Rizoma being lined up with the uh, rider as well. To this way. Yeah. And then that way Min and Max is facing the person. It's on both sides. Well, look at that. Yeah, but then that this way you can see Rizoma. And then what you could do is you could loosen this and you can tilt this so it sits flat. Right. Let's see if they gave us the same size. They did. 
I mean, it just, it's just go. rotating. Now right? go the other way, just a hair. Good. Does that look pretty? Yeah, that's pretty level. That's pretty level. Now nice you could have know. it this way. You could put it long ways this way. Right. You know, you could angle it in towards this side a little bit. Wherever you want to put it, we'll put it, and All then right. we'll do the, the hose. All right. I want it to be lined up with the handlebar. Okay. So it's so like slightly angled. We, and it gives, uh, some, gives us clearance. Finish well. that off. Let's take this little plastic washer off because that's just there to hold hardware. We uh, realized in the uh, slight little break that we could take this top off and rotate it. So when I was saying over there, we wanted to, I wanted to have Rizoma facing the rider. We could have it whatever way we wanted. But now we got to get this right angle. What is that? A nipple? Yeah. This right angle nipple into this hole. Not on the stem, on the seal. I think I said that like 30 seconds ago. I thought you meant like up here. No. I was going to do it on, on the rubber. Side. You're there, Brian. Cross the finish line. There it goes. Did it pop in? Yep. Nice. Grease and lube is your friend. Always remember that. That's what I learned from my years of experience working on motorsports. Power sports. Uh, power sports. <laughs> Did we ever find out what this little credit card is? No, I'm not sure what it is. That's what I was thinking it might be. Let us know what you think it is in the comments down below. It's a gift card to Toys R Us. RIP. How do these work? It's called an Oedeker clamp. Okay. It's a one-time use pinch clamp. Oh, so once you... Once you put that shit on, it's on there. Right. And then to take it off, you have to destroy the clamp completely to get it off. So what do you do? Just throw it, like, before I put it on there, where do you clamp, or where do you squeeze this down at? Where can you squeeze it at? So I'm imagining you clamp it on the side. There you go. Like right there and there. Where and where? Like... You what? actually pinch it where you had your fingers holding it. Right here? No. Look at it. Look at it well. Oh, I see. Are you sure? I know you like to say that. As soon as I hand you, I'd be like, oh, no, I No, no, you can see the little ridge that it can be pushed into. I know you're confused because you've never had to use an Oedeker clamp before. Right. I'm trying to get you to look at this to figure out how this thing is supposed to work. This top piece where it sticks up in the air is the spot that as you squeeze it, one side feeds into the other. So that top little ring little plateau you squeeze you're not together. gonna take this clamp and smash it oblong right that's not gonna tighten it it's just gonna squish it this way and then it's gonna open up this way that's not gonna you can't squeeze it on the sides you have to squeeze it here so it actually tightens the ring around your hose so the teeth part of the pliers fit at the very bottom of that and as you squeeze it the top stays up and it pulls in the sides so it's like this oh. you pinch it here and it does this this stays open I see. actually make pliers to do this specifically, but you can use uh, diagonal cutters or, or dikes work. Okay. Well, then if that's what we're going to do, then we'll just do so, that. You good? Okay. That makes sense now? It does now, yeah. sure there's no air in it and then we have one more bleeder to do okay now before you take that hose off pump yep. it and continue to pump so it'll draw fluid so you don't get it all over the place all right now the the one on the master cylinder yep is the only one left Okay. 
pump it. You're gonna have to do this one a little quicker because it's gonna drip. So just yank it off? Yeah, pull it off. <laughs> we lined it up right at the uh, max number. It was intentional. Now those screws screw into a little plastic piece so they don't have to be real tight. Yay, our Peningley's got brakes again. It's gonna make it so much easier to uh, move it around now. Brakes always take so much longer than I ever anticipate with all the bleeding and everything. Especially, it was like all dirty and stuff too. And Yeah, the cleaning stuff took a minute. Yeah. Well, when you're doing calipers and you're starting with all fresh fluid, you wanna make sure that everything is cleared out and clean. And what you wanna do is see that beautiful, beautiful B-roll foot. Alrighty, now that uh, Brian gave it the old wax job, uh, I think that's the end <laughs> of... Uh, I think that's the end of episode 13. Installation of the front brake master cylinder reservoir, reinstallation of the calipers and cleaning the calipers. And installation of new brake line. And new brake line. Gosh, and all new crush washers. We did a lot more than I thought we did. I mean, I knew what we did, but you know what I mean? Anyway, if you guys got to the end of the video, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this series, and uh, out to our crew, uh, let us know where you think the hands are. I'm Chase on Two Wheels. That's Brian. You've been floated around by Luke. This is Wreck Bike Rebuild, and we will see you on the next one, where the hands may or may not be there if they're able to be found. All right.